How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about my one of my most favorite builds in Albion Online, and that is the Sword and Shield. I've been kicking ass with this build. I have been absolutely kicking ass. I'm just going to go ahead and explain to you guys uh, the details here of why I go for what I go for. We start with the Adept Sword, uh, tier 4.1. This is mainly a good build. I mean, this is a good build even if you're higher tier. But this can work as well. You can go 4.1, which is equivalent to a tier 5. So this is a good early build. So a Dev Broad Sword, Sarcophagus, which is good against players and mobs. One of the best ones against uh, players, actually. This shield, phenomenal. There's also another one. Um, and that one is this one, which is pretty expensive. Um, and it still has less defense against players compared to the sarcophagus one. Uh, but the other one gives way more stuff, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but this this is good because it's not too expensive and it's affordable. Um, Adept Soldier Armor, right? We got the Adept Hunter Hood as well, all 4.1 gear and Adept Knight Boots. Now we're going to explain why I go for the abilities that I go for. Um, these items so let's begin all right so in an adept sword we go heroic strike obviously if we're fighting in pvp if we're fighting in pve we go heroic cleave now the cleave is really good for rounding up mobs and hitting them all at once so that's also something to keep in mind is that you want to swap these out versus mobs and one versus players uh next up we go interrupt i i this is okay iron will when you unlock it i have really seen interrupt being more useful because you can interrupt healing uh people who heal you can interrupt their healing so it's good for 2v2 hellgates uh, this is actually my build for 2v2 hellgates and i've won multiple times as you can see i have 1.1 million silver uh with this build pretty much um but i never go iron will yeah it increases your move speed to, by 20 percent and the damage that you receive is you know reduced by a certain percentage for four seconds yeah that's all minor you know that's okay but you're not exactly a tank you're kind of like a semi tank because you actually do a lot of damage um but the reason we go soldier armor which i'll explain in a bit is because it actually increases your damage i'll get to that in a bit um but yeah honestly i just go interrupt even if i unlock this which slows targets for you know 35 38 percent for 6.52 seconds i still think this is more of a tank kind of thing and if you're gonna be aggressive man interrupt is so good because not only does it interrupt spell casts but it also deals a good amount of damage and for the next five seconds your normal attack damage is increased by 20 percent for each heroic charge on you so the max of three stacks which is the heroic strike if you land three stacks on heroic strike and then press w your normal attack damage is increased um so you really want to get three charges obviously then you want to use interrupt and then you want to use mighty blow but there are things i'm going to tell you here like a tips on on how to do this properly because you don't always want to just use interrupt every time it's off cooldown sometimes it's good to wait for the interrupt i'll explain why you should wait and hold it and not use it instantly and finally mighty blow uh jump towards an enemy it, it is a dash by the way so it does you know you can catch up to someone it's your gap closer um, if they escape somehow you can chase them with your E and do a bunch of damage so if you see that they are escaping you at a certain distance you can actually chase up to them and catch up to them that way um, even if you don't have heroic charges sometimes it's good to just get closer to them like finish them or something like that or just to maintain range because remember the E is on a very short cooldown 10 second cooldown so you're gonna have it up by the next time you have three heroic charges think about it heroic charge is a three second cooldown so every three seconds you're putting a heroic strike so three six nine seconds and by the time you'll have mighty blow already so it's good to use it to get catch up to someone so that's okay and finally we go for every four normal attacks you you inflict a bleeding on the enemy this deals an additional 43 per second yada 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 you know you know the rest um every this one every four normal attacks you get a heroic charge is 
actually insanely good when you do unlock it. I don't have it unlocked at the moment, but that's what I will go for. Because imagine having every four normal attacks giving you, you know, giving a heroic charge. So you can Q twice and then eventually with all these attacks in between that you're doing in heroic charge, you'll have a heroic charge. So it's good to keep in mind that you should look at the top left corner of your screen to see if you have heroic charges or not. So you know when to do your E or W or whatever. So that's pretty much it for the sword. Next is the shield. It has nothing really like in terms of abilities, but the defense against players is 3.9%. Defense versus mobs 3.9%. Third generation, by the way, if you don't know what that means, it's against mobs. It's just so that you attract the mobs to you kind of thing. So this is only good against mobs, really. It should only be considered against uh, PvE. This is my favorite armor. This armor is absolutely phenomenal because you get 7% damage bonus. That's the important part. The 7% crowd control duration part isn't as important because you, there's no crowd control in this build, but there's a lot of damage. Um, so gaining 7% damage bonus and it charges up to 10 times. So we activate it and it will be an indicator like this. It's shown red here, top left. You can see how long it's lasting. And here's how many numbers it goes up to. Every time they hit you, it, goes, it keeps going up. You should use your E by the end of the fury. Because when you do that, you would have the max amount of damage bonus that you get from this, meaning your E will do an insane amount of damage thanks to your fury stacks. So you only want to use fury when you're being attacked, because if you use it randomly and you're not being attacked, it's not going to work. You know, you only get a 7% damage bonus. You want to make the absolute full use of this. It's on a 30 second cooldown. So you don't want to just activate it every time it's up. You want to activate it when you're being attacked because this will actually help a lot. So what you want to do is basically when you're being attacked by big damage spells, you press D and then you press R. This way you're retaliating against damage that's being dealt to you. And at the same time, the damage is being dealt to you. You're gaining damage bonus from it. So you're dealing back damage to them, thanks to Retaliate, reflecting all incoming damage. And also increasing your resistance, so you're resistant for 4 seconds. You're also, you're also getting damage bonus for every time they hit you, so it's so good. Like, if they keep hitting you like this, and you have these two up at both at the same time, you just demolish them with your E, once you have 3 heroic charges. It's actually insane damage. The amount of damage I've dealt, you wouldn't even believe in PvP and Hellgate, like... I've had up to 10 charges on Fury, and I did a, an insane amount of retaliation damage. You know when they do a big ability, you reflect that back at them, and I have 10 stacks. I have 3 heroic charges on this, then I press E. Boom. That's going to do an insane amount of damage. You have 749 damage on 3 charges. That's going to be upped by a lot. It's not going to be 749 damage. It's going to be at least over 1000 damage uh, with all that Fury stacks and the let's consider that retaliation as well you're gonna be doing so much damage it's actually insane um but yeah as well as interrupt when you interrupt someone your normal attacks your basic attacks will be you know doing more damage so for four seconds your normal attack damage increased by 20 percent so you can literally get three heroic charges 10 fury stacks retaliate on top of that you're doubling when you have Three, char uh, 3 charges with 10 fury stacks and then you press E on top of that you just do so much damage this build is actually phenomenal um, when it comes to that kind of thing when you have like that's the best case scenario is when you get all these stuff the counter to this is if they stop hitting you if they stop hitting you you don't make use of the fury stacks or if they stealth so against stealth players they're obviously gonna if they're, if they're good players they will stealth when they see you activate this and this they will stealth immediately and wait till it's off cooldown. And when it's gone, see now the retaliation is gone. Now the fury is gonna go away. Now they now they fight you. Now they fight you because you don't have your R and D. So that's the counter to it. You have to make sure you inspect the enemy player and make sure that if he has assassin jacket, is he gonna stealth? Is he not gonna stealth? It's actually very important to keep in mind on how to play this build properly because a lot of people might just grab this build and play and be like oh well this is not very effective it's the way you play it's the way how you make this work is that's really gonna matter so we talked about soldier armor we talked about the shield we talked about the sword this is the hunter hood of course we're just talking about retaliate is huge with fury and we go increase your damage and heal power by 1.5 percent because attack speed isn't necessarily a major part of this build unless you're running a bow or something and you want a lot of dps now this is all about damage um 
also incoming damage reduced by a certain percentage also helps with the resistance you get from retaliate so it works it works well uh, obviously by the way here i'm sorry i forgot to talk about this but incoming damage reduced by 4.7 percent uh, and normal attacks this one doesn't actually matter these two these two are specifically for mobs so this is also a good pve uh build so normal attacks apply debuff on mobs which reduce max health so if you hit mobs you reduce their max health and makes them you know you kill them a lot easier now the cape doesn't matter because early on you're not gonna have a cape like the one i have right now this one i got from 2v2 hellgate and i love this cape by the way it's actually really good but when you do have enough money you should buy this because it's actually amazing um basically whenever your health drops below 70 percent increases your damage by 50 percent for six seconds let me just give you guys in perspective what this means okay when you see this berserk active it gives you 50 percent damage for six seconds okay now 50 percent damage plus 10 fury stacks plus the fact that i'm retaliating all their damage at the same time plus three heroic strike charges plus my w which will um for no my normal attack will be increased by 20 percent because of sort of three heroic charges and then boom blast them with your e on three heroic charges that damage is actually insane so what you want to do is when you drop a certain percentage of health like it says here 70 percent health and you have that circle around you it's going to show uh, like a animation of it berserk it's going to show like an animation a circling whirling bloody kind of animation and you look like a fucking monster you look so scary you have your thing like this and you have this, and you have that circle thing around you, and you have three heroic charges, and when you hit them with E, oh, it's gonna hurt so much, you wouldn't even believe. So that's why I really like this cape, uh, because you have six second window of doing that damage. So you wanna pay attention to that and make use of that. It really does so much damage. This is a, a very heavy, heavy damage dealing kind of build, uh, all based on receiving damage. So as long as you receive damage, you're good. Um, if you don't take damage at all, you should never use R. You should never use D. You should just keep hitting them with Qs and Ws and Es. Just hit them with these three abilities mainly until they start hitting you. And when they start hitting you, you want to first thing activate D and then R. The reason I activate D first is because I want to be able to retaliate their damage immediately. And then press R because, you know, the damage bonus, which is very good. And finally, we're just going to talk about uh, Shield Charge, which is actually like a dash, which is actually really cool. Now I'm going to test something. I'm not. I'm pretty sure you can't dash to your mount. Yeah, you can't. But if I go to another player, I'll be able to dash to him as well as dash to enemies. And when you do dash to them, you gain a shield. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to show you the range of this. Look, this is, this is how far it goes. So I can walk up to here. Boom. Shield this guy. It will shield people around him. See, so there you go. It gives him a shield. It gives me a shield. And it's honestly phenomenal because it helps you survive um, if you're in like a tough situation. And it's really good for 2v2 Hellgate because you can shield your teammate if he's being uh, focused. You can shield him and fight the other two. And it's also a good engage tool. If you want to engage, like someone's in 2v2 Hellgate, he's walking a bit far, for example, or in, in black zone. Um, you can just do this and boom, you just dash to him. Keep in mind that it will dash to the person you have select. Uh, target on so if you want to deselect someone you press alt s there you go see left click see i can see his name up here and everything and check inspect i press alt s just like that and now i can dash whoever i want basically if you have one selected and you press f instantly without pointing your mouse on anything it will dash to that person no matter what um, so what you want to do is alt s remove it and then point your mouse where you want so i don't have to necessarily target this guy but i, I can have my mouse over him and then i press f and it's going to dash to him just like that so what you want to do the safest thing to do is left click someone that you wish to dash to keep in mind by the way i'm using rts controls so um what i, what I mean when i say rts controls is this rts like controls where right clicking is um my movement and left click does nothing but inspect people so left click doesn't attack it only craft and stuff like that now i'm actually gonna go ahead and do this guy uh just to show you guys how this actually works um he's saying you look amazing Alia. thank you sir he's uh running claymore mercenary jacket expert guardian boots so we just gotta make sure we use our dnr properly here 
charges. I'm getting a lot of fear set. He's doing the smart thing, which is running away when I have that thing up. There we go. Got some good damage in. Oh, this is gonna be close. I might be able to kill him here. I'm just gonna use my E. There we go. Got him. Got him. See. Good fight, man. See, he did, he did the smart thing there, and he walked away when I had my DNR. I'm gonna tell him that he played well. This is actually the smart thing to do, is you should move away when your fury is up. So that's actually one way to counter it, uh, to counter this build. And also stealthing, when you activate R&D, same thing we explained before, also counters it pretty hard. So that is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and fight him one more time, just to showcase the build a little bit more. Now this guy's actually pretty good by the way, because he is backing away when he has to. I'm gonna try to use my interrupt properly here. He's waiting for cooldowns here. Get my fury up. He's running away because my fury's up. He's incredibly fast. I'm gonna go ahead and E here. Boom, there it is. Yeah, we got we got at least seven Fury stacks there. We got enough Fury stacks. We got enough Fury stacks, and then we just unleashed our E on him, and we caught him. He's actually not bad player, by the way, because he's moving away when Fury stacks are up. And he's also probably moving away when he doesn't have his cooldowns up. So, there are ways to counter this build, but honestly, in general, it's really, really powerful. And uh, it should be taken into consideration... Um, that how much damage you actually deal That's pretty much it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, Hopefully it's been helped out. I will see you guys on the rift Peace out